Well, Kurt and I have made it to Koto from Tao, which is, let's just say we were hiking for 11 hours non-stop. Well, we stopped and had tea a few times, but we even skipped lunch, ate Snicker bars. We we're supposed to go the low road, because it would have been, you know, much easier given the amount of uh, of train we're trying to cover today. We're trying to make up for, uh, you know, a rest day. But what happened was we somehow managed to get on the high road. Which took us probably close to 10,000 feet. About 3,000 meters or so, I'd say. Yeah, so that's about 9,000 feet. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, we left off where we were completely lost and bewildered. And there was that Nepalese man heading off into the hills, and I was like yelling at him, Hey, hello, namaste. And he was like a ghost, man. He didn't even turn around. <laughs> It's freaking spooky. So, you know, Kurt and I had found a shelter, so we were going to stay there if we had to, but, you know, without sleeping pads, which we left back at the hotel, it would have been pretty freaking cold. Um, and then mysteriously, this dog shows up. And it was like a spirit guide. It just guided us to the village. And every time we stopped, the dog stopped and waited for us. So I'm shocking it up to uh, Tasha being Indian. She sent us a uh, guardian spirit to uh, get us back on track into the village. Well, it's uh, another day in the Himalayas. Um, unfortunately, I left my hunger clothes out to dry last night to air out, and it rained, it was a little misty, so right now it's, let's see, I'll watch it right here. Right now it is eight degrees Celsius. And our clothes outside, I think, are like damp and wet. Which I'm not sure is a good thing to put on and go hiking. So, I'm trying to think of what to do here. I don't want to lose another day. Um, and, um, I'm thinking we might just go put on the clothes we're going to wear today, wet, and go in there and just kind of hang out by the fire for a while and have breakfast. Maybe it'll dry off a little bit on our body. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's not a good, good idea. Mm -hmm. So we'll just, rather than trekking off, soaking wet, which is asking for hypothermia, we'll put on our clothes, go have breakfast, and just maybe our body heat and the heat of the fire inside the inn area. We can just dry our clothes on them. As soon as they're dry enough, we'll head out. Our innkeeper was gracious enough to share his fire with us. Do I say hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you could see it, go down. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to dry off our clothes a little damp because the mountains are misty, so we're trying to dry them off in our bodies while we're having some breakfast. Mm. This is the small town of Kyoto. Namaste.
Kurt and I are uh, on our way out of uh, Koto. And uh, this time we asked directions to make sure we're on the right road. As an added precaution, broke out the GPS, fired it up, and discovered what did we discover, Kurt? No satellite reception here. Yeah, too many large mountains around us, which I knew would be kind of a problem. Parts of the train, but in other parts of the train should be okay. So, anyways, it's a nice cool morning. Bundled up. Kurt's hands are cold. They won't went up at all? I don't know. How long should it be to leave warm up? I get like 15 minutes or so. If they're still like really cold and hurting, we'll both stop and fill the mitts on. Okay? Okay. But we're definitely in Alpine country now. It's cold and uh, we're headed to Chami. Kurt's uh, swapping the gloves. His hands are freezing. You know, you may have uh, that's, oh, that same syndrome Lissa has. The, uh, you know, cold hands, cold feet syndrome. Why are my feet feeling like they're frosted? No, I'm good. There you go. Are your hands purple at all? No. Okay. Kind of a major uh, town for uh, playing for the circuit, so we can get some uh, supplies, money exchange, and uh, maybe get internet. Who knows? Right, here we go, half a journey. That's neat. Early morning in Chami.
uh, stop every so often and uh, change our socks and, you know, once a day. Take off the drenched ones, change them to dry ones, and hang the drenched ones on the outside of our back to dry off. Tighten our boots makes a big difference on the last half of the day. Not a lot of people on the trail in December. I think we can count on one hand the number of truckers Kurt and I have uh, run into. So it's kind of just us out here. These are uh, tributes. They give thanks for making it this far. And at this point, I'm gonna take a little rock. And I'm gonna put it right here on top of this one. That indicates our thanks for having a safe journey this far.